Okay, as promised, more plot of General Hospital. I am going to be starting from the very beginning of the soap. So Joe set the YT device, the YT machine to April Fool's Day, 1963. Apparently they had a drunk driving problem back then, too. Because our soap opera opens up with a, little, with a young 18-year-old girl. Opens up with her feet, actually. And the uh, two hands pounding on the furniture. Anyways, so a young girl named Angie is upset because she is in bad. The nurse, young nurse, Sissy Brewer comes in and she sees the shades drawn and a uh, towel over the mirror as usual, apparently, due to the fact this is the first episode. The audience is unaware of this fact, so <clears throat> she's like, okay, this, this has gone on far enough, long enough, so, uh, anyway, so Angie is like, she's like, what's wrong with you, Angie, and she's like, what do you think's wrong with me, and she's like, my face is all ruined. And you see Angie with bandages all over her face. And Steve Hardy comes in, played by John Berardino. And he's all, Angie, this has gone on long enough. Uh, if you were eight and not, if you were eight and not eighteen, I would uh, understand your attitude, but. You're old enough to understand the facts of life, yada yada. So he takes off on a shift, takes off his, takes off, and uh, is greeted by his wife Peggy Mercer, or not his wife, but his lover Peggy Mercer, and. Uh, they have a date to go to a dinner and theater, and uh, Peggy uh, tells him she has a flower board for his buttonhole. He gives her a kiss, and she gives him a forlorn look for some reason. So, then he gets dressed, he tells her he's going to just take off his scrubs and the other minute, so he takes his scrubs off. And then they, after he's all dressed in suit and complete with the flower, he sees... He hears the a noise from Angie's room uh, because the orderly has come into the room and says, tells her that she has to eat or she's not going to be a pretty woman. And uh, they hear the crash of the tray because Angie is so upset that she's not going to be so pretty. She's like, I'm not going to be pretty, I'm, I'm going to be ugly all my life, and uh, Steve previously to this has told her that the plastic surgeon is going to do all he can to make her look good, but uh, she's not believing anyone except for, yeah, she's not believing anyone at this point, so... 
she's having her little pity party, as my dad would say. So, anyways, uh, the tree crashes, he goes to the room and tells Angie to grow up, and she's like, and she asks if he's leaving, and he tells her, yes, I am leaving, and I'm going, I'm getting off my chef, and she's like, no, Steven, no, no, Dr. Hardy, don't, don't leave, and he's like, Angie, it's time for you to grow up, I'm, take me off, and then a different patient is having trouble with, it, isn't responding to medication that he's prescribed, and the blood pressure is dropping, so Steve has to attend to the patient. And so Peggy Mercer gets upset at that. She's like, your patients will always come first. And gives the tickets to uh, Jesse Brewer. And um, Jesse's like, well, Phil's, Phil is always on duty too. And it's just the facts of being a doctor's wife. Peggy is all not hearing it, so it's so both Peggy and Jesse are having their little problems. Peggy with uh, Steve and uh, and uh, Angie. Surgery coming up, so. and then so she so Peggy gives the tickets away, and so Phil Brewer comes in off his shift, and he's like, "Well, who's the lucky who who leaves the who are the lucky people that these uh, tickets belong to?" and uh, Jesse tells them that uh, they belong to uh, Peggy and Steve, or Peggy and Steve, and uh, he's like, that they that Peggy gave them, but Peggy didn't want them. And he's like, well, why don't we go? And so, uh, she's like, what us? And she's like, and he's like, well, of course, why not? And. Uh, so she's like, well, we're always looking, and so, so they decide to go off on a date, and she tells them that she'll wear a pink black silk dress that he likes, and uh, he he sniffs at her for some reason. And he's like, no, yeah, you wear the black silk dress. You look good in it. And then, uh, uh, so John Berardino played by, so John Berardino comes back to, from his little thing, from his patient with the blood pressure problem. And he visits uh, Angie and tells and so tells her to trust him, and she's like, "You're the only one I will trust." And then uh, he leaves her after he tells her everything will be alright, and he's and she's quiet for a moment. And he's like, "I'm gonna create something up." All right, and so she says, "All right." So he leaves, and Audrey Hardy, Audrey, uh, says everything was all right for today. It was a good night, Doctor. And she's like, "Yeah, it was all right." And he, he throws the flower in the trash, and 
gets on the elevator, and then we hear a crash from the from Angie's room after he gets on the elevator. He doesn't hear it, but uh, but Aji does, and then they're both credits.